Hello again, this is Phil Misk for Subbase Academy with another Ableton Live 9 look-in. This time I'm going to concentrate on some of the new audio effects Ableton have brought to the table, which we're all pretty excited about. First up, I'm going to show you guys the new compressor, and to show this off, I'm going to load in a drum loop. Let's pick something a little loose and live. Okay, that'll do. Okay, just a nice little funky loop into our audio effects and load in our compressor. Now first up you can see that it's a much more, well, compressed screen view of it. They've kind of taken a lot of the information that was unnecessary out and just kind of reduced it to this graphic of just three knobs, three bars, and then some more controls over here on the right hand side. So you've got your threshold, ratio, attack and release that you know and love. Your knee setting is here, it's just a little numerical, you click and drag up and down. And what you'll notice here is a new dry wet control. So if we increase our ratio up hugely, bring our threshold down so we're doing a lot of compression here. So we want to keep some of the characteristics of that really heavily compressed sound. We want to keep some of the smooth original. So we can basically do some parallel compression right here by just dialing in a little bit of that hyper compressed signal. So it's a really easy way to get that New York compression or parallel compression sound. Really great addition to the new compressor. So what are the other funky things about it? We've got this second icon down here, which is the transfer curve that you know and love from the previous compressor. If we just increase the threshold a little, you'll see where you've got your standard curve, your knee area here. And you can really just look at it the way you're used to looking at it anyway. It just uses up that little bit of extra screen room that you might not want in a live scenario. And third, last but not least, is this brand new activity view, which blew my mind when I saw it first. It's a great way to explain to people exactly what a compressor is doing. If, like me, when you started producing, you knew a compressor sounded good, you knew that you were kind of supposed to use them because everybody used them, but you didn't know exactly what it was doing. So you've got a great graphical representation here where you can see the peaks and troughs and the dips that the compression is actually doing. So let's just decrease our attack. You'll see that compressor is acting a lot more quickly here. Increase our ratio, you'll see that it's taking a lot more out of it. If we decrease our ratio to one, you'll see it's flatlined, it's not doing anything. So it's a great way to see exactly what your compressor is up to. There's two ways to look at it here. You've got the gain reduction view and you've got the output view, which just shows you the true output coming from the compressor versus the original signal in gray here. So I think you'll agree, it's a great way to see exactly what's going on. Great way to explain compression to people and just a great way to work as well if you really want to see and get a good feedback from your compressor and see exactly what it's doing. So let's give it a lot of compression here on that signal. Okay, so moving swiftly along, let's have a look at the next and exciting addition to your Dynamics plugins enabled. We've got the glue compressor. Now to really show you what this does, I'm gonna to have to load in some more samples something else a bit different from this loop. Yeah, something a bit dancey. And maybe something a bit heavier as well. Let's just make a quick heavy dance clip for this. 4-4 four, four on the floor. Okay. So now we've got three different audio streams of drums that we have in our mix. Now, as you can hear, they sound a little bit loose, which isn't bad. But when we're at mix down stage, we'll probably want to group these into a sub mix, which is what you would do on an old mixing console. So we'll select one, hold down shift, select the last one, then press Apple or 
Alt and G. And that'll group all the tracks into one submix. Now just because it's what I do, I'm gonna change this to say drum bus. And I'm gonna load one of the blue compressors from our audio effects tracks here. So this is actually analog model on the old SSL desk channel compression, which is used, it's that real 1980s sound to just kind of glue everything together. We'll decrease the threshold just so we're licking it a bit. We've got a nice medium ratio here, four to one. Release is set to six, and attack will increase that little to let a bit of the peaks through. Now, as always with a compressor, you want to compare like with like. You want to listen to the raw signal and the compressed signal, and just make sure the compressor isn't lower or higher, really, so that you're getting, you know, too excited by just something being louder as opposed to listening to exactly what the compressor is doing. So. Okay, maybe a bit more welly coming out of the compressor. Yeah, that's it. And you can really hear, it's just tightening up the, the three mixes. Just that kind of nuance that you need in, in your mix down. It's really making them, well, it does exactly what it says in the tin. It's really gluing them together and making them sound part of a cohesive whole. And once again, if you want to crank up your ratio, you've got that parallel setting here on the right hand side dry wet but I quite like the sound of this as a whole so I'm gonna put it up quite high and on a subtle setting okay so that's the glue compressor really really good and I find that I'm not using third-party compressors anymore on the mix sound stage just because you don't have to it uses next to zero in their processor up here that's why I find I'm also using it in a live set on the master bus just to make everything glue together in your live set you've got the option of using a really great sound an analog compressor with a minimum of impact on your CPU. It really has a good sound to it. So, moving swiftly along in our audio effects lineup, let's have a listen to the gate, still in the Dynamics family. Very similar to the gate in Live 8, but just has an overall better sound. You'll hear if I increase the threshold, decrease the release, much smoother sound than the gate in Live 8 which was nice but really kind of unusable if you have it on some really subtle parts like you know a good singer with a you know a good microphone and a quiet track where she's not going to be masked by a bunch of different signals and you're really going to hear an honest performance you need a good gate to get the most out of it and get rid of a little bit of studio noise or maybe different kind of unwanted audio signal like in a guitar you've recorded in or an analog synth with some home in it really important to get a good gate and able to really brought one to the table. You've got a nice graphical representation as well here doing similar things to the one that we saw with the compressor where you can really see the before and after. So a really good sounding gate there. And last but by no means least we've got our EQ8. Now first thing you can see when I load it in is it's got a frequency analyzer built in which is just amazing. It's something that third party plugins had up until now, but now they're able to have it and they've really improved the sound of the EQ8 as well. There's really less of a need to jump to those third party plugins. Why not use something that sounds just as good, uses very little processor power, and offers you a few tricks that nothing else I've seen does. So one of the first modes you'll notice, if you turn on this audition mode and you turn on one of your EQ parameters, then you can raise it or lower it as per normal on the left hand side. But if you mouse over it and click on the five, I'll be auditioning just the difference that that parameter is making to the signal. Really, really handy for isolating those nasty little resonant peaks and things. Like this one here. You might want to increase your cue just to do a surgical cut on that. And then take it out of the mix. So you might have noticed the curve that I was implementing there on that parameter was changing a little as I went up and down in the gain. That's because there's a new thing called adaptive Q or adaptive resonance on this EQ8, whereby the more I increase or decrease with the decibels on this cut or boost, it'll adapt the resonance to work with me. So if I am just making subtle improvements, it'll give me a subtle bell curve. But if I'm making more surgical cuts, it'll increase the resonance and work with me. It's a really good way to increase your workflow, I suppose. 
just when you're making random EQ boosts and cuts here and there, it kind of knows or preempts what you're going to do based on how much you're changing your signal by. That's once again modeled on the way that the old SSL desks used to work, and it works really well. Of course, you can bypass it if you fancy the old way, but I really find it quite handy. And finally, you'll notice this times four low pass and times four high pass available, which are great, especially in the mix down or mastering stage, just to completely annihilate those frequencies that you don't want. And I almost forgot, if you want a closer view of everything in here, you can fold it up, you've got a much clearer view of your whole frequencies. And you've got a cohesive view of all your parameters down here. You don't have, just have to rely on whatever one you've chosen on the left hand side. You've got a view of everything right here. So I think you'll agree, some great additions to the audio effect family there from Ableton in Live 9. Stay tuned for some more Ableton Live 9 look-ins with me, Phil Misk, for Sub Bass Academy.